Dr. Fauci, thanks again so much for, for joining us. First of all, what is your reaction to the president saying social media platforms like Facebook are, quote, killing people with misinformation? Do you agree with that? And what should be done about it? Well, certainly disinformation and misinformation is really, really a problem. When we go out into the community and ask people why they don't want to get vaccinated, very often they come back with things that are really just not true. So that's one of the things that the Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy, the other day made an appearance at the White House press conference and really stressed the importance of countering misinformation with correct information. And that's really what we're trying to do, Jim, to get out there with trusted messengers to get people to understand the facts about vaccine. The numbers that you mentioned, Jim, are striking. You can't run away from those. 99.5% of the deaths that occur from COVID-19 are among unvaccinated individuals. That's a striking statistic that yet, should people really don't believe that, wake though. up everybody. But Dr. Fauci, people, there well, are it's people the out there who don't believe it. Yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's when you get into the misinformation, Jim. People don't believe something that is absolute statistical facts that are collected not only by the CDC, but by every organization that looks at this. And it's not just social media, though. Uh, the most watched television show on Fox News right now is uh, outright uh, hostile to the vaccine and this environment. Do you think we could have eradicated polio or defeated the measles uh, if you had uh, Fox News night after night uh, warning people about uh, these uh, vaccine uh, issues that are just, uh, no. you know, bunk? Well, that is a very good point, Jim. If you look at the extraordinary historic success in eradicating smallpox and eliminating polio from most of the world, and we're on the brink of eradicating polio, if we had had the pushback for vaccines the way we're seeing on certain media, uh, I don't think it would have been possible at all to not only eradicate smallpox, we probably would still have smallpox and we probably would still have polio in this country if we had the kind of false information that's being spread now. If we had that back decades ago, I would be certain that we'd still have polio in this country. Mm. And the Delta variant is a big factor in this surge, too. Uh, let me ask you about something the Israeli prime minister has said in recent days. He, he says that they are finding that the vaccines are significantly less effective against the Delta variant. Uh, going as far as to say vaccines are not enough to beat back the virus. Does that track with the data that you're seeing? What do you think about that? You know, Jim, we got to be careful to remember when these vaccines were shown to be highly effective, they were highly effective in preventing symptomatic, clinically apparent disease, not necessarily against preventing infection, which we call sterilizing immunity. They were quite effective in doing that, but not nearly as much as the 93, 94, 95 percent efficacy in preventing symptomatic disease. So when you start seeing what's called breakthrough infections, if you look carefully at them, the overwhelming majority of those are people who either have no symptoms or only very mild symptoms. So the vaccines are still very, very effective in preventing severe disease, because if you look at the risk of hospitalization and deaths, we're still well up into the mid to low 90s in efficacy against severe disease, which is very important. People need to appreciate the difference there. Right. People were making the mistake in saying, oh, because there are breakout cases, uh, there must be something wrong with these vaccines. The point is to prevent people from getting seriously ill and dying. Obviously, there are going to be some infections every now and then. And one area of concern for vaccine skeptics has been full approval uh, for a COVID vaccine from the FDA. You hear that from talking to people. I'm sure you've heard that from time to time, talking to neighbors or people at the store, that sort of thing. When could we expect full approval for the Pfizer va vaccine, for example? Well, Jim, I, again, I don't want to get ahead of the FDA, but likely from what we're hearing, it's going to be in a matter of a month or so. I would hope by the time we get to the end of August that we have full approval. But, you know, even between now and then, people should realize that the data of the efficacy and real-world effectiveness 
of these vaccines is really extraordinary, not only in the United States, but in multiple countries throughout the world. So I would be astounded if we did not get full approval within that time frame. And a timeline for vaccines for children under 12, what do you think about that? Well, we're doing the studies now, Jim, of what's called age de-escalation, where we're looking at from 12 to 9 years old, and then from 9 to 6, 6 to 2, and then 6 months to 2 years. Thus far, things look good. Uh, but the final decision is going to be up to the FDA, and I would imagine that likely will not happen until we get well into the winter towards the end of this year. Hmm. And the White House says Florida is home to one out of every five new cases in the U.S. Uh, that, that is remarkable. Uh, it is unlikely, though, that the Republican governor there, Ron DeSantis, will institute masks uh, and social distancing again. Uh, he's, he's very much gone in the other direction, as you know. Uh, in addition to that, I'm sure you're aware of this, Dr. Fauci, a PAC uh, tied to Governor DeSantis is currently selling merchandise that says, don't Fauci my Florida. Uh, I hate to uh, ruin a perfectly fine Saturday new afternoon for you, Dr. Fauci, but uh, what do you make of these beer koozies and that sort of thing that say, don't Fauci my Florida? You know, Jim, uh, it almost doesn't even deserve a comment. It's just... You know, taking an individual who stands for public health, for truth, for doing the right things to protect the safety and the health of the public, which I have done now for four decades, and to use my name in a derogatory way to prevent people from doing things that's for the benefit of their own health. Go figure that one out, Jim. I have no idea what that's all about. That doesn't make yeah. any sense at all. Yeah, whoever planned that maybe had too many beers. But uh, let me move on to the next question here. Uh, Germany and France uh, are having some success, as you know, getting people vaccinated in recent days. Uh, they're granting privileges to people who get the shot. Uh, France just said you have to show proof of vaccination or a negative test to get into restaurants. That has led to a record number of people signing up for the vaccine over there. Is it worth trying something along those lines in the U.S.? Uh, create kind of an easy pass or fast lane approach for uh, the vaccinated at, va uh, at restaurants and uh, airports and that sort of thing. Can that type of approach work in the U.S.? Can we get that kind of a system in place to move some of these people along that are just uh, hesitant to go get vaccinated? You know, Jim, I'm not going to pick out any specific incentive and endorse it or not, except to say that in general, we really want to try everything within reason. We've got to get people vaccinated. These are life-saving interventions. And if we could think of some creative ways to incentivize people to get vaccinated, all the better. I'm all for it. All right, let, let's talk about COVID origins. Uh, you, you've been talking about this for some time, uh, fielding questions on it for a while. Uh, CNN has learned that some senior Biden officials uh, think that the lab leak theory, which has been talked about for a while now, is at least as credible as the natural origins explanation. Um, has your thinking on this changed at all? Does that uh, no. align with your thinking on this? I keep an open mind and say that we should consider all possibilities until we definitively prove one. But I, together with many uh, highly qualified vaccinologists, including, uh, and virologists, I mean, including a recent paper by 21 internationally renowned uh, virologists and evolutionary biologists from all over the world, indicate that although we keep an open mind that it is possible that it could be, a, as they say, a lab leak, that the most likely explanation is a natural evolution from an animal reservoir to a human. Once you say that, which I believe is the more likely, you've got to make sure you emphasize that you still keep an open mind for all possibilities, including a lab leak. And so you think natural origin of the virus is the more likely, I think I just heard you say, you still believe it's the more likely uh, I do. scenario. Yeah, right. And I'm not alone in that. I mean, a recent paper was put out by 21 very well internationally respected virologists and evolutionary biologists who said the same thing as I'm saying. And I rely on people like that who have great experience in this. That's what they do every single day. 
who again are open-minded and saying it is conceivable that you may have had uh, a lab leak. So you've got to keep an open mind to all possibilities, but they feel that the more likely explanation is a natural evolution from an animal host to a human. And has there been any evidence to, to emerge that would point us in the direction of a, a lab leak or does it remain uh, a hypothetical I, type of a scenario here? You know, Jim, there's been a lot of attention paid to it, a lot of tweeting, a lot of editorializing. I haven't seen any concrete evidence that would make you feel that anything over the last couple of months that's new makes you think it's more likely to be that. Again, having said that, we still want to keep an open mind that that is a possibility. But I have not seen anything new in the form of compelling evidence that would make me feel more strongly in that direction.